What's up everyone, welcome back to the Derby Compound. So today is another Troubleshooting Tuesday. Sorry I've been MIA for a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and troubleshoot a hot water heater. This is for an electric hot water heater. Um, if you're looking for troubleshooting a gas water heater, um, this is not the place, not the video. Um, I'm sure I'll come out with one in the future, but um, today we're gonna figure out um, why one of the elements in this water heater is not working. So I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot, do some steps, um, and you can diagnose it on your own at home and we'll, then we'll go through the process of uh, replacing an element if that is the case in uh, your hot water heater at home. So stay tuned, we'll get right down to it. Okay, so the first step in troubleshooting this water heater is making sure we have power. So if you don't have a multimeter, uh, like one of these, a digital multimeter is awesome. Uh, if you don't have one, some people have a, a analog one, a cheap one, or you can use one of these test pens. Um, this test pen I have is from Klein, um, little cheapy. I think they're 15, 20 bucks. Um, you literally just uh, have the have it on, and then you can put it up to the power line, and it will tell you if there's power. So uh, first, we're going to open up the cover, and we're going to test to see if we have power. I'm going to bring you in real close. We're going to look at the uh, the main thermostat with the reset on it and then uh, we'll go down to the lower element and test that one for power as well. So I'm going to show you how to do it with um, this little guy here if you have one of these and I'm also going to show you how to do it with the multimeter. Let's get started. The panel here only takes a uh, quarter inch uh, uh, little nut driver so these panels are real easy to take off. You literally just taking the panel off, um, uh, use your screw uh, or you know retain your screw in the cover I always put it underneath the insulation so I don't um, lose it so you're just pulling your insulation out here and uh, now you can look at the main thermostat and then um, the the top element so usually uh, a water heater should be hot to the touch everything around here should be hot your out your uh, outlet pipe should be hot relief valve should be hot uh, at the bottom on my water heater, it's uh, extremely cold. So uh, it's as cold as the tap water coming in. Now keep in mind, if you're troubleshooting this and you just ran a lot of hot water, the, the cold water is going to start at the bottom and naturally rise in heat. So if you just used 20, 30 gallons of hot water, yes, your water is gonna be cold at the bottom. So we haven't been using the hot water for a couple hours. Um, it's probably been all morning that we haven't used the hot water. So the bottom of the tank should not be cold. That's giving me the indication that the bottom element is not working. So now let's bring you in close and we'll troubleshoot exactly um, how we do this and how I shoot it. Oh, I didn't tell you before, um, if you wanna use the good old lick your finger method and touch it, um, that'll also tell you if there's electricity or not. Don't do that. That If you like to get hit with a 240, you know, you can do that, but I uh, don't recommend that. Okay, I think we have enough light here. Um, I, I think this might help a little bit. Uh, first thing you wanna do when you come down here uh, is, is touch a reset. Um, keep in mind that we still have the power on. You want to make sure that you have power to this in order to see if it's working. So one of the things you can do is uh, you can use your little pin tester here and test for power on both these these hot legs. Um, this is both one. This is a 120 volt AC, 120 volts AC if you're here in America. So basically, what this thing does is supply the 240 um, down to the actual heating element. This is your heating element here you can tell that this is on right now. Um, I have it, um, what, what you need to do is, uh, if, you, if you come to your water heater and um, it might not be on at the current time. So what you wanna do is you wanna crank your thermostat all the way up. So let me bring the, let me bring the, um, the camera down just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, now that we're down here, um, it, looking at our, our top thermostat. So this guy is uh, basically has a contact element on the back of it, and it basically sits flat against the tank, and it figures out how hot the tank is, the cast iron right there, and figures out if we need to turn on our heating element or not. The lower one also has a, heat, uh, a thermostat on it, so it'll have the same kind of thing, but smaller. So. So it looks like this on the back. So it is literally just uh, 
uh, making contact with the cast iron and uh, making sure if you need heat or not. This is an old one, so this is just what it looks like if you were to slip it out. There's little areas to slip it out. If you need to replace this, um, basically we need to, I'll show you exactly how to, how to do that as well. Okay, now we're down here at our thermostat on our upper element. So this is our upper heating element here. This is our thermostat. You'll see a reset switch here. Um, this reset switch is basically like a circuit breaker on your water heater. Um, if you're popping the main circuit breaker at your service panel, you definitely have a direct short somewhere and you definitely want to figure that out before you start trying to put power to it or at least be around this area. Um, keep in mind, we have 240 volts coming in here. So your multimeter should be set at above 240 volts AC. So this one says, you know, uh, we have to be at 700 because 200 is the max for this setting. So we should be at 700 volts AC. That will be our maximum that we can um, that we can measure here with this multimeter. So we're gonna come up here. Um, this is our one leg of 120 and our other leg of 120. We should get that 240 volt reading. So we have 245 volts. That shows that we do have power in here to our thermostat. So now we can, um, I had to move the multimeter so that I could see. Hopefully I didn't come out of frame. So now we want to uh, figure out if we have voltage here at the heating element. So we have nothing yet here at the heating element means that the hot water heater is not calling for heat. So what we want to do is, um, usually if you come down here, um, it might be that your hot water heater is already hot enough that it shut off this main element. So what, we, what you can do is you can take a little flathead screwdriver and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this thermostat up. So I have it set at about 125 degrees. I'm gonna crank it up to 150. So what this will do is you could hear it pop. You heard that audible pop. That means that now, it is supplying 240 volts to both of our heating elements. Okay, so now we know that this heating element is getting power. So now let's go down to our lower heating element and check that, make sure it's getting power. So we wanna make sure that this thermostat is working correctly first. So now we've, uh, we've said, hey, the power's getting here to the top element. Let's go down to the bottom element. We'll check that one and then we'll cut the power off and check our, our continuity. These are basically resistance um, heating elements. I'll show you what that means here in a second. So it has to have a consistent loop. So I'll explain that. Let's go down to the lower element. I'll show you that. Okay, one thing to note on these uh, electric water heaters is that the upper and bottom element will not be on at the same time. It will basically cascade so that the top element will heat up first and then it will switch to the bottom element. So we wanna make sure that this bottom element is also getting its 240 volts AC. So we're gonna go ahead and put our leads on here. Okay, now we're getting 240 volts AC down here. So this element is also getting power. So one thing that if you do not have power down here, what you need to do is you need to turn the, the bottom thermostat up and you need to turn the upper thermostat down. That will turn on just this heating element. So if this is getting 110 volts AC, that means that the thermostat up, up at the top element is not telling this bottom element to turn on. So if I were to go up to the top element right now, it would not be getting 200 volts AC. So you just need to make sure the bottom one comes on. Um, now, the fact that this is getting power and the tank is physically cold, you can feel it down here, it is cold, and we have not been r running the hot water so that it's not, it's not uh, behind. Um, that means that this lower element is probably bad. So let's go up to the workbench right now. I'm gonna show you how the element works, how to shoot one on the ground. We're gonna disconnect this one and shoot it for continuity, and I'll show you exactly how we can tell if this element is bad. Okay, so there's two different kinds of elements and there's two different wattages usually at any of your big box stores. Um, these elements I got from Lowe's just as a, uh, basically a, uh, uh, an example here, this is a uh, loop over or double back or whatever you want to call it, double over. Um, the, both of these uh, elements, usually all of the elements in your electric hot water heaters are resistance elements. So you will see some resistance in this, this element when we shoot it for continuity. So I go ahead and open this up. What we're going to do is we're going to shoot for continuity between these two leads. So I'm going to show you on the table, make, make it, uh, you know, uh, make it easier to see me shooting this for continuity. 
So something I like to do is always set my multimeter so that um, it makes an audible beep when I have continuity. I hope you can hear that. Um, hopefully it's not too high pitched for my microphone. So when we set these leads on here, um, should have continuity between them. Okay, so that shows um, that shows we have continuity. Let's measure it for um, actual ohms. So we're gonna ohm this out, and it looks like we have 32, oh, hold on here. I'll turn that back towards the camera. Hopefully you can see that. So a good element here is showing 77.7 ohms. All right, cool. So we know what a good element looks like. So let's go back over to the hot water heater and I'll show you exactly uh, what it's measuring. If it is open, that means the element is burnt out. So that means we're getting power to it. It is supposed to be working, but the resistance or the loop here is basically not working. The whole reason this works is because there's resistance in this line and as, as current tries to pass through it, it is heating up, so to get red hot. So basically if there's no loop and it has burnt itself out inside, then it cannot work. It will still have power, it just won't heat up. And that's exactly what it looks like our situation is on the hot water heater. So that is how I troubleshoot it. So let's go down there, let's disconnect the leads, obviously cut the power off, and we'll test the continuity on that one. If it's not, um, if it doesn't have continuity, then we know that is our culprit, and that's what's bad. So we're gonna probably make a second uh, video for the series on how to change the actual uh, heating element out. I'm not gonna draw out the video to, you know, figure out, uh, you know, after a 30 minute video, you've figured out or you haven't figured out what your problem is. So uh, let's head on back over there. Okay, make sure, okay, I do have power still coming in. I have not shut off my water heater yet, hold on. Okay, now I have shut the, uh, the power off to the hot water heater, so we should have no voltages coming in. Looks like we're good. Looks like I still have something there. What is that? Oh, all right, so I can't see the multimeter. Uh, pain in my butt. Okay, so we just have, all right, no voltage coming in. Good, all right. Now we wanna take our leads off here, off this um, hot water heater element down here. Um, let's go ahead and pop those off. Those are Phillips head screwdrivers. We're gonna go ahead and take these leads off and let's test our element for continuity. Okay, there's one lead that comes out and the other lead comes off. Okay, now back on what we were talking about earlier, we wanna measure for ohms. So if this is open, we know this element is bad. So we're gonna test our leads together first, show that we have ah, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms of resistance between our leads. That is all in the cable. So now let's test our element. Okay, our element shows that it is open. So our element has burned itself out down here. It is open, so um, usually that means that there is no go, no power's getting through it, it's not making any heat, obviously we can tell. So now we've narrowed it down to a bad heating element. All right guys, well there you have it. We troubleshot down to a bad heating element, uh, the lower heating element on this water heater. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you got some value. Um, if you find that I'm value to you, then I'd like to see you around the channel. And uh, as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.